Hi, and welcome to Introvertebrates. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about my Gramasola poultry piece, also known as the Chaco Goldney, or is it Goldney? Either way, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this species in general, but also about the individual I keep here. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Keep watching. So the uh, Gramastola poultry piece is from uh, Argentina and Paraguay and they are found in the wild in like grasslands and shrub forests and stuff like that uh, and in general I think they're from the Chaco, re the Chaco region which is of course where they got their uh, common name from. The Gramastola poultry piece can reach pretty large sizes about seven to eight inches or 17 to 20 centimeters in leg span. Uh, they are still considered a very docile and calm species, so it's often recommended for beginners. And if you have a female Gramstola poultry piece, uh, you can expect to have her for up to 20 years, maybe more. If it's a male, it's quite a lot less. Uh, five to seven years is the common lifespan for a male, so. Uh, that's one of the reasons, if you're if you're not familiar, uh, that's one of the reasons why people want females rather than males when it comes to uh, tarantulas. And I've had my Gramastola poultry piece since June of 2024, so about six months now. And uh, since she's been here, she's uh, she's been awesome. She she's a good display spider. She's out a lot. Uh, she has dug a really sweet little burrow for herself, and lately she has been excavating a little bit. So maybe. Maybe she's uh, starting to close in on a uh, molt here soon. And uh, I like to talk about how I've often seen my tarantulas expand their burrow before they molt, which makes sense because they will grow larger. So that's pretty cool. So uh, I will definitely give you guys an update if she uh, molts anytime soon. Well, whenever she molts, I will let you know. And like Grandma Stella poultry piece in general, she is pretty calm. Uh, of course, she's quite small still, and uh, I got her as a juvenile. She molted once since I got her, and still considered pretty small. It is a confirmed female, but uh, a bit more skittish now as a juvenile, then she will probably be more calm as she grows larger and older. But uh, still comes out a lot, as I said, and uh, just an all-round fun spider to uh, have in your collection if you ever thought about getting one. She's also pretty good during feeding. She likes to take down her prey and she's pretty fast. Uh, she is generally like when she is hungry, sometimes if she's not hungry, she, she acts kind of weird about it as you see in this one clip. But generally she takes down her prey with fury and I generally just feed her. She gets cockroaches, mealworms and crickets. That's mainly what I feed her and uh, she seems to be doing fine with that. And in her uh, vivarium, she has uh, kind of a mixed soil uh, and then it gets progressively more sandy as it gets higher. So I try to uh, I try to make it like nature. So the soil is more and more like soil in general, I guess. Uh, and I mix the soil with leaves and sticks and moss and gravel and whatever, like stuff like that. But I, as this is a species that's come from a pretty dry region, uh, naturally, it will not be as uh, humid on the top, so I try to keep the top more a mix uh, of um, sand and and other things with the with the soil, and then it's just more and more um, natural soil going down, which creates more humidity down in her burrow. So if she can decide whether or not she wants a humid environment, or if she wants to sit higher up in her burrow or outside of her burrow, she can have. Uh, a little bit more uh, dryness, if, if that's a, is, is that a word. This way of uh, keeping her vivarium also allows me to keep some plants. Um, of course, when I water these plants, the water will go down and the plants will just take up what they need. And of course, I have a little false bottom. I generally have that, so excess water will just run off. And, uh, and I think this has been working pretty well. And, uh, of course, before a molt, I will increase the humidity a little bit 
but uh, so far she seems to be very happy. I have noticed sometimes after I've been watering the vivarium made it a little more humid, she tends to be more up. Sometimes she climbs up to the top of the vivarium, which is common for these dry species. It's an indication that might be a little bit on the humid side for her preference, so she, then I will just kind of just let it go. It, it usually dries out on top pretty quickly. Thus far, uh, this female Graham Stoll poultry piece does not have a name. Uh, I've got one suggestion in my comments, which, which was uh, Choco, I think. But I would love to hear from you guys. If you guys have other suggestions, I would love to hear them. And maybe I'll do a little poll and you guys can vote. Uh, either way, like, uh, she should have a name for sure. So hopefully we'll get that uh, going pretty soon. And uh, again, if you guys have a good su suggestion, I might, uh, I might use that or, or put it up for a poll. I know it's not that many subscribers on this channel, but it is growing and I'm very appreciative of that. So uh, yeah, if you guys need some more interactions to uh, my loyal <laughs> subscriber base, uh, I would love to interact with you guys more. So feel free to let me know what you guys think about it. Uh, Either way, I think this might be a good place to stop. Uh, this is not the longest video, but I don't have that much to talk about when it comes to her. She is just a fun little spider and uh, definitely uh, must be in the collection. I think if you start getting accumulating uh, quite a few species, this is a really great spider to keep. So uh, that's something you should uh, consider. Either way, thank you so much for watching and feel free to check out my Instagram for more pictures and videos of spiders and other invertebrates. Um, yeah, thank you, and uh, thanks for creeping on my crawlies. Bye!